Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence. In today's video, I am going to be talking to you about Sharp Tree Explainer. So we are going to cover what is Sharp Tree Explainer, examples of Sharp Tree Explainer for random forest model, and different types of method for Sharp Explainer, and different types of plots for Sharp Explainer. And at the end, I'll show you how to get this notebook and share with you other videos that I have related to Sharp um, Tree Explainer. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. Um, this right here is the documentation for Sharp Tree. This is what the documentation looks like. You can come here and look at it. And right here, um, you can see the different explainers. So today, I'm going to be talking about the tree explainer. Then there's the gradient explainer, deep explainer, kernel, sampling, partition, linear, permutation, additive. So the, there are uh, many different explainers here. Um, just different plots and a different data sets. So you can come here and explore it yourself. But for today's video, I'm just going to focus on Tree Explainer. Let's begin with um, the meaning of Sharp. But before we do that, um, I just want to let you know, like, so up here I have two models. Um, I have the LRC, Logistic Regression Model. And then I have the CVRFC, which is the random forest model. And this um, grid search CV is using random forest classifier as the estimator, as opposed to um, anything else. And so if you see um, CVRFC and LRC today, that's what they mean. So LRC, logistic regression model, CV. RFC is a random forest classifier model that um, I built using Crystal CV. So with those out of the way, um, let's go ahead and talk about SHARP. So SHARP stands for Sharply Additive Explanations. And from the documentation that I just showed you, um, it says that um, this SHARP uses three SHARP algorithms to explain the output of ensemble tree models. An ensemble tree model will be something like random forest classifier, random forest um, regression, regressor, um, something like gradient search, gradient boosting model, you know, SG boost model. Those are kind of examples of tree based models. And tree sharp is a fast and exact method to estimate sharp values for tree models and ensembles of trees under several different possible assumptions about future de dependence. So that's kind of like a brief overview of um, SHARP. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move on, move on to an example of SHARP Tree Explainer. So first you have to make sure you import SHARP. Well, before you import SHARP, make sure you install SHARP. You know, I'm at just Google install SHARP. You see I'm instructions on how to do that. But make sure you import Sharp uh, after you install it. If not, this next step is not going to work. I've already imported Sharp earlier. Um, up here, we are, have like different things. I went ahead and imported Sharp as well. So this is the syntax. So the syntax for Sharp tree is Sharp dot tree explainer, and then in parentheses you have the model. So that's the syntax for sharp true explainers and i'm not going to take the time to write out all the code here just to save time so this video is not like two hours long um, but i'm going to put the code here and i'm going to explain it to you so uh first let's see sharp explainer in action um, we are going to create an explainer using the random forest model created above so we are going to say the explainer is equal to sharp dot tree explainer sharp dot tree explainer like i showed you up here that's the syntax and then in parentheses, you put the model. And the model here is the best estimator from this um, random forest classifier model that I built. So the best estimator from it. Um, so that's the first step is to build an explainer. The next step is to obtain your sharp values. And your sharp values is explainer the sharp values. So sharp values is actually a method of explainer of sharp tree explainer right and then in parentheses you put s test s test um that's your test data set and then you're getting um, your sharp values from that 
and your S test is normally what you use when you are making predictions like after you've built your model. If we look here in the Sharp Tree Explainer documentation, and if you scroll down, you see that um, Sharp Values is one of the methods available under Sharp Tree Explainer. And it says it estimates the Sharp Values for a set of samples. So I'm not like making all these things up, you know. So Sharp Values is actually one of the methods available. So after obtaining our Sharp Values, the next thing is to do a summary plot. And if you look on previous page that I showed you, I'm just a summary plot method there. So um, we are doing sharp dot summary plot, plot the sharp plot against the S test. So we are doing sharp values is our Y value, S test is our X axis, and the plot type we want is bar. So let's go ahead and run this. So as you can see, this is done. Um, it didn't take as long as I imagined it to take. It only took about a minute and 28 seconds. But um, this is kind of what it looks like. That looks super cool. And um, basically class and um, blue is class one and zero and pink. Is that pink? I call it pink. Pink is class is zero. And it basically shows you how each feature impacts the predicted values. So total trans count um, and total trans amount and total revolving balance has the biggest impact in helping to make predictions for this particular model. This data is trying to predict churn for a credit card company. And these are like the factors that has the most impact on why somebody would churn, like would um, cancel their credit card. So let's move on to sharp methods. So there are many different methods when it comes to sharp tree explainer. So sharp has many different methods and here's a few of them, just the init method, which is which uses sharply values to explain any machine learning method, any machine learning model or Python function. Um, this is what I showed you above, that's the init method. And then there's the explain row method, which is used to explain a single row. There's the sharp interaction values, which um, is used to estimate sharp interaction values. And then the sharp values, which estimate sharp values. And I've already shown you how to use sharp values above, and I've shown you how to use the init method above. Um, this right here is the init method, and then sharp values, the init method, sharp values, right? So um, I'm going to show you like the sharp, like above here, I showed you sharp values, right? But you actually didn't see the values. So right now I'm going to um, show you the values. Like you can actually print out these values if you want to see them yourself. So this is the code to run the sharp interaction values, but running this sharp interaction value takes forever. Like last time I tried to run it, it was over an hour long and it still wasn't done. So um, do not run this code right here unless you're willing to wait for an eternity but if you wanted to run it this is the code um, for you to like obtain the sharp interaction values that's fun to use the sharp interaction uh, method um, let's look at the sharp values method um, like I said earlier so like I showed you earlier sharp values is just explaining the sharp values and then you provide your S test and if we go ahead and run this and we should get an output, an array of sharp values. So this is um, a sample of what your sharp values look like. And here's a short explanation of what they mean. So the row is single prediction made by the model. So this row right here. So this right here from here to here is an array, right? And this dot 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 just means something is missing. So for example, you could also do, let me do sharp values at position one, at position zero. So now you can get a better preview of what you're looking at. I'm actually let's do um, zero, zero. Okay, now that looks a whole lot better, right? <laughs> it's easier to see it. Um, let's do zero to five or zero to Let's look at the first three. So this is like the first um, three sharp value predictions. 
actually i need to put for the right there um if when you do this is inclusive this first number is inclusive so zero and this last number is exclusive so it stops at two okay so now this is the first three right here right so this is the first prediction set of predictions this is the second set of prediction the third set of prediction so forth and so on so a row a single a row right here is a single prediction made by the model and column features column is the features used in the model and value is how much each feature contributes to the output of that row's prediction so um to understand this better i might be able to do something like df.head i believe df is the name of my data frame so basically if you are using looking at a single row right here we have um 27 columns and five rows um just for this so so if we look at our x train so our x train has our original data had 27 rows but our x train has um 19 our original data has 17 our original data had 27 columns and our x train like that's the data that actually went into the model had 19 columns right right here you can um, count this yourself if you want but we have 19 columns right here and if you look right here we have um 19 data points so when you look at when you're looking at your sharp values um this all of this right here is the prediction for a single row let's take for example row 415 and this negative 3.3 .3 is a prediction for customer age this um negative 5.9 is a prediction for dependent count um this 1.2 at the end is a prediction for card category churn on that row 415 so that's kind of how you interpret your sharp values so that's what the sharp values mean i spent a little bit too much time on that but i wanted you to understand the meaning of the sharp values so um, in addition to um, sharp method we do have sharp plots so there are many different sharp plots and this is an example uh, um, i'm going to show you a few examples of them i've already shown you an example of a sharp plot cost summary plot um, but this is the documentation so you can take a look yourself if you want to so as you can see um, this is sharp plots right here i've already shown you how to use summary plots but there's decision plot and uh, force plot and the other types of plots so this is the same as the sharp plot i showed you above and the syntax is basically sharp dot summary plots and then sharp values and then the futures that's the syntax for using um, summary plots so the other type of plot i want to show you is the decision plot um, this is the documentation for decision plot so you can go read more about it if you want to but the syntax for decision plots is um, sharp the decision plot and then you have the base value and then you have the sharp values so for us to get a decision plus we first have to get the base value so let's go ahead and calculate the base value so you obtain the base value by doing um, explainer dot expected value that is your base value and we can get a preview of what the base value looks like so that's what we get for base value at position zero right and then we can just do you can just do let's say um base you can just type in base here and let's go ahead and run this i changed the size of my mouse a little bit because it was getting annoying so um this is my base value this is the expected value 0 0.84 and 0 0.15 and we can look at the value at position one which should be 0 0.15 if we do at position two it's gonna throw an error because there's nothing at um there's no third base value index out of range so i just kind of wanted to show you what the base value looks like so we've already obtained obtained the sharp values that you're going to need sharp values and base values so sharp values at position zero um, which is row number one at position zero is and um, these are the sharp values right now we have the sharp values and the base values we can kind of get the decision plot so let's go ahead and plot the decision plot and th this is the syntax of decision plot like i showed you earlier so sharp the decision plot and then we do base value base 
um, is whatever is located at position zero, and then sharp values is sharp of whatever is located um, um, position zero, and then we just do the first five. And let's go ahead and run this. And that's kind of what it looks like. The decision plot it looks super cool. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how you will use this, but um, it's a fun thing to do, like a fun graph. If you want, like eye candy kind of graph. And we can change the value. So let's put um, position one. The value at position one looks similar um, to what we had before. And let's change this to one right here. Oh, it looks different, right? So remember um, earlier when I said that um, the one we have class zero and class one. So in sharp, right, we have, um, I believe, what is located at sharp position zero is either class zero or class one. And what's located at sharp position one is either class zero or class one. So when you change, um, this you are changing it without you're making predictions um, on class zero or class one so that is really cool you can play around with this and kind of get an idea but the point is there are many different um summary plots there are many plots you can do with sharp and this is just one of them i just wanted to show you a few so these are not the only videos i have on sharp i have um many videos related to sharp so um, this is a video I have on, on how to use force plot. And um, I'm going to put the link to all these videos in the description below. Um, but this is like the title of this video is how to use sharply additive explanations for black box machine learning algorithms. And then I have a video on how to do partial dependence plots. And uh, a video on how to do partial dependence plots with two futures, single future, two futures. I have a video on how to do partial dependent plots on um, 3D. And all of these videos can be found on this playlist. And, and of course, I am going to add these video descriptions in the comments. Now, I'm going to add these videos in the description. So this is um, the playlist I'm referring to, you know, how to build um, different um, sharp plots and how to use them. So if you want to learn more about sharp, you can check out the videos here. Right here in the documentation, you can kind of see um, decision plot, decision plot first plot, um, partial dependence plot. Um, so I have a video on all of this. You can check them out on the channel. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, like this video, and share it with anyone you think finds helpful. helpful. To get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. Here, this is where I have my data science resources, including this one. And any notebook I use in my YouTube channels will be found here in my data science resources area. So I hope you like it. Um, go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free to get access to this notebook. Thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.